Okay, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create an XML driven video playlist to go along with your custom uh, video player. So we're going to first create the XML file for this and I'm just in Notepad Plus but you could use any plain text editor, you could use Dreamweaver, anything that you would normally use to create XML files is fine. So this is not a basic introduction to using XML with Flash. Uh, if you need that you can look at the XML photo slideshow tutorial I did for the real basics. Okay, so the first thing we need is that XML declaration and technically Flash would be okay uh, without having this but it's not considered well-formed XML and if you want to use this XML file in a different application you would run into problems so it's always a good idea to have that there. Okay, the next thing I want to do is create the root element and I'm just going to call that videos. I'm going to go ahead and create the closing tag Okay, so this is my root element, and all of my uh, videos are going to be nested inside of here. So I'm just going to create one tag for each of the videos that I want in my playlist. And so I'm just going to call it video. And within this, there's going to be two attributes. The first is the URL to the FLV file, and the second will be a descriptive label. So I'm going to say URL equals, and just give it the URL to the FLV file. It's librimlo.com slash FLV slash FFSF dot FLV. And this is just a video from the last uh, Flash Forward conference. Okay, so now I want to put a descriptive label in there. So I'm just going to DESC, short for description. I'm just going to type in Flash Forward SF. Okay, so I have my URL and I have my description here. Now I can close this tag just using the shorthand syntax forward slash then close that bracket. Okay, so I want to go ahead and do this for all of the videos that I want to have in my playlist. So I'm going to go ahead and create that and uh, when I'm done we can look at the finished XML file. Okay, so here we are and uh, I've created all of my video tags for all the videos I want in my playlist and I've saved that as videos.xml and now we can jump over to Flash and I'll show you how to populate a list box component with all of these videos. Okay, here we are inside of Flash and I'm using the same video player that we created in the Video Basics series so if you've been doing those tutorials you can just uh, start off with the same file that we left off with in those tutorials. Okay, so what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to put in a list box component right next to the video player here, which is going to hold our playlist. So I'm going to come up to my layers, and I want to create a new layer. I'm going to call this video list, and I'm just going to lock everything, and then just unlock that one layer. Okay, so now I want to come over to my components panel, and under UI components. I'm going to come down here to list and I'm going to drag out a list component to the stage and just place it up next to the video. And I'm just going to go into free transform mode and just size this up approximately. Okay, so now I have my list box out here on the stage. So I need to give this an instance name, so I'm going to highlight it and come down here and I'm just going to call this video list. Okay, so now I have my list component here. Now we're going to go into the action script and actually populate this with the uh, videos from our XML file. So I'm going to come down to that first keyframe in the actions layer and highlight it. And I want to open up the actions panel. Okay, so I'm going to come down all the way down uh, the very bottom of our code block and start doing our code here. So the first thing we need to do since we're using XML is to create an XML object. So I'm going to say var, I'm going to call it vList, strict data type into XML, equals new XML. And as always, uh, just to be sure that uh, the XML ignores white space in our document, we're going to say vList.ignore white is equal to true. Okay, so now we want to set up the onload event. Um, for our XML object. So this will be called once Flash is finished loading in the XML file. So we're going to say vList.onload 
is equal to function. Okay, so if you followed the uh, XML photo slideshow, you know that the first thing you want to do is get to that first uh, element, our root element, which is videos. And to do that, we use first child, and then we want the child nodes array of that, which is basically an array of all of our uh, video tags. So we're going to set that equal to an array. So I'm going to say var videos strict data type at two array is equal to this, which is referring to the XML object dot first child which gets us to our root element which is videos and then I want the child nodes array so I say child nodes so basically this line of code will take all of those uh, video tags and put them in this videos array so we can work with them okay so let me get some space here okay the next thing we want to do is we want to iterate through this videos array and as we iterate through it, I want to add uh, the videos to our list box component. So I'm going to create a for loop. I'm going to say for i equals zero, i is less than videos dot length, and then i plus plus. Okay, so now we're going to go through this videos array and populate the list component. So the way to populate a list component is to use the add item method. So my list component is called video list. So say video list dot add item. And to the add item uh, method, we need to send two things. First is the label, which is what will actually be displayed in the list box component. And then the second parameter is the data and that's going to contain the URL to our FLV file. So to get to those, we want to go to videos and then go to the uh, the element which is represented by I because we're going to be iterating through this dot attributes. This gets us to our XML attributes and then we've called it DESC short for description. Okay, so the second parameter to this method I'm just going to copy this and paste it. Now we want to go to that other attribute, which is to the URL. Okay, so let me just explain this really quick. So we're going to go through the for loop for each of the items in the videos array. And we're going to add, each time we go through, we're going to add it to that list component, sending the description is the first parameter, and then the URL is the second parameter. Okay. So now I can close this for loop. Okay, now what I want to do is uh, the first time it comes through, when when this XML is first loaded, I want to start the first video in the list playing in my video player. So I'm going to say ns.play. And now what I want to do is to find out what that first uh, item is in the list component. So I'm going to say video list. Then we use the get item at method. And to this we pass which index or which number item we want to get at. We want to get at the first element, which is represented by zero. Okay, now we have two choices. We can either get the label, which holds a description, or we can get the data, which holds the URL. And we want to get the data because we want to be playing the FLV URL. So we're going to say dot data. Okay, this will start playing the first video in our list box. Okay, now one more thing I want to do is I actually want to highlight that first uh, video in the list box just so we know that this is the one that's playing. And to do that, we say video list dot selected item equals zero. So we're basically telling it to select that first uh, video in the list just so we can see it selected and it will be a different color than all the rest of the videos. Okay, so I can go ahead and close this now. But up in our old code up here, we're manually telling it to play a video. And here we are, here's the ns.play. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that since now we're 
starting the video playing uh, inside of our XML on load event. Okay, so now that we've set this up, now we need to create a listener object which is going to respond to changes in the list component. So you need to create a listener object to do this. So the first thing I'm going to do is create that listener object. I'm going to call it vid list and create object listeners. You always just create a regular generic object equals new object. Okay, now we're going to set up the change event for our list component. So I'm going to say vid list dot change is equal to function. Okay, now in here, what we want to do is first we want to find out which item in the list component is selected, and then we're going to send to the ns dot play method the URL of the selected video. Okay, so we're going to say ns dot play. Now in here we need to get to the actual item that's currently selected in the list component. So we're going to say video list dot get item at. And now this is where we need to give it the index to what's currently selected. So to do that we need to use the selected index property of the video list. So we're going to say video list dot selected index. And that will return to us the number, the index of the currently selected item. Okay, now like before we need to get to the data property because that actually contains our URL. If we were to put the label property it would just give us that descriptive label that we gave. Okay, so now I can close that. Okay, now like working like when we work with any type of event listeners we need to register this uh, with our video list component. We're basically registering to receive its events. So we're going to say video list dot add event listener. And now we're going to give it what event we want to listen to. We want to listen to change. And now we pass to it our listener object which we created up here. It's called vid list. Okay, so this was a lot of ActionScript code, and uh, you may have to go over it a few times just so you fully understand it, but I'm going to walk through it one more time right here. Okay, so first thing we do is create that XML object, and we o like we always have to do with XML, we just tell it to ignore white space by setting this property to true. Then we set up the onload event for the XML object. Now this is called once Flash has went out and got the XML file and loaded it. So the first thing we do in here is we create an array and we assign to it all of those video uh, tags that we created. So this array now contains all of our videos. In this for loop we loop through all of those items and each time we go through we add the video to our list component that's out on the stage. Sending to it first the description, that descriptive label that we created and then the URL. Then since we want the first video to play right away when we come into our movie we're calling the ns.play and we're getting the data property of that first element in the, in the list component. And then with this line right here we're just selecting it so that it will be colored different and uh, it'll be an indicator to the user which video is playing. Next we have to create an event listener object which is just a generic object. Then we define a change event which is fired whenever the user clicks on a different uh, item in the list component. So when that happens we want to change the video playing through the net stream and here is the code where we actually get the URL of the currently selected item. And then finally we need to register our listener object to receive events from our video list component which we do right here. So now if I go out and test the movie we should see it working. Okay and oh, I've left out the most important part. So you can do all this fancy XML parsing but if you don't tell Flash where to find your XML file and to load it then it's not really going to do much. So I need to load the XML file now. So I'm going to say vlist.load 
and then just give it the URL to the XML file, which is videos.xml. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, now we can see our first video is playing here. And actually, there's one more mistake that I've made, which is that first one should be selected. So let's go back to the code. Oh yeah, I have selected item here. This should be selected index. So when you're telling it to select one of the items in the list component, you need to use selected index. Okay, one more time. Now it should be correct. Okay, so here we are. That first video is now playing, and we see that it's selected so that users can see that it's the one that's currently playing. And just to change videos, I just have to click on one of these, and it starts playing uh, the different video. So you can use any type of component here. In, uh, besides a list component, you could use a combo box, or you could not use components at all. You could use, uh, you could dynamically create movie clips uh, for each of these videos. But this is just the basics on how to import an XML video playlist. And so to add new videos to this to your video project, you don't have to ever come into the flash file again. You just have to update the XML file. So I hope you found this helpful.